Hello, my name is Craig Barr. I'm going to uh, take you through a sculpting workflow for um, the creature that uh, is outlined in the tutorial in the magazine. Um, we're going to start off with this base mesh here. So it's a simple base mesh that I've provided for you to uh, work through with this. And this forest creature guy, kind of a kind of a forest rock root uh, troll kind of character. Um, this base mesh is what we're going to start with here. So. I'm just I'm using the W hotkey actually at any time when you're sculpting a mud box you can press the W key to look at wireframe. So a couple notes about this we're going to be focusing on sculpting starting from the base uh, forms and structure and working right through to all the way up to some detailing. So we'll look at a couple of different techniques and a couple of different tools that we'll utilize. At one point as well we'll customize we'll build some custom tools we'll use some vector displacement maps to customize those tools as well, as well as some vector displacement stencils just to help us with the sculpting process. Uh, another note here, I am actually running Mudbox 2011 uh, Subscription Advantage uh, Pack, but everything that I'm going to show in here will be applicable to the trial version that you can grab um, off of the Autodesk site. Um, the interesting thing about the Subscription Advantage Pack is just you can if there's something specific that sticks out, I'll, I'll mention it, but I'm not going to do anything specific uh, necessarily to the uh, SAP. Um, if anything, you can think of it as a preview of what's coming in the uh, new, newest, latest release upcoming. So let's start with this character here. What we want to do is start working in some base shapes on here. I'm going to start with a simple sculpt layer, and I'm going to start with tools like my foamy tool and my wax tool here. So. Foamy wax and sculpt are what we would like to work with to build up things. I find foamy and wax are the best to build up some basic structures here. Now, one of the things I'm going to point out, I could be using the mirroring function in here. I'm not going to. I'm actually just going to start roughing in some of the base rock shapes on this character's leg. So I'm going to subdivide him up. I've created a new layer. I'm going to bring him up to, let's bring him up to around level 4. That will be. That should be fine enough just to start with some basic, um, simple structure in here and we can work with our wax and our foamy brush back and forth an important thing to note is the fall off that you want to use I'm gonna start with this kind of hardened fall off here and you'll see what that's gonna give me is kind of this hardened result uh, as I'm sculpting here so I can just start roughing in these kind of stone rock boulder shapes that we want to work with on this character this character's legs and just being careful to not go too deep out of his leg here and I'm just sculpting those in. I have my full strength up on there and you can vary that um, with the M hotkey will bring your strength down and your brush size you can use the B hotkey as well just like in Photoshop the bracket keys will bring your brush size up and down as well so let's just continue on here and, and start to rough some of these structures in. So the idea here with this character is that he's comprised of rocks, boulders, uh, different stones, um, and this kind of rooty tree structure that is woven throughout him. We'll get into that um, in a couple of the other videos here. But we're just going to keep roughing in some of these stones and these boulders. And all I'm looking to do here right now is just get the general shape. I really don't care how much the stones look here. The idea is just to start working with an overall process, uh, getting in the base forms and structure. This here, I'm going to use my my control key uh, to bring it down, or actually what I could do is switch to my erase brush and just to actually erase that. I don't want that chunk sticking out in there. Um, I think it's okay to go ahead and build some stones that are very round and, and different, and even some stones that are kind of brick-like, just kind of randomize them up. Let's go back to our wax brush here and continue building this up. Build a nice big kind of brick-like stone through here. And as I'm building, what I'm doing here is I'm leaving some gaps in between. We're going to fill those in later with roots um, and some vine structures, different things, debris, different pieces of debris that we can use to fill it up. Now for the knee, I'm actually going to, I want a separate stone here, a separate rock. So we'll build that boulder up. The wax brush is excellent for building up these forms. Okay, so the difference here between the wax and the foamy, think of the, the sculpt brush as something that's going to deform your geometry uh, essentially 
in the, the, the bring the vertices in the direction of the average of the normals of the vertices on your, your surface. The foamy brush you can think of in a very simple way as kind of a softer sculpt brush. So you're going to get kind of a sculpted effect with a very, very much kind of a softer feeling to it. It is a different feel when you're sculpting with it. My favorite brush to build up the forms is the wax brush here, especially for forms like this. And a couple of things to note, I'm going to leave some big gaps open here on this guy because we're going to put some big root structures in there. For this foot, I want kind of a shin kind of built up here so that we are kind of working with some basic form of these stones, these rocks and these boulders, but we do want to follow something that, you know, if we wanted to take these maps in uh, back into Maya Max or Soft or any package and rig this guy up, providing your renderer will support uh, vector displacement as well if you wanted to write out those maps or you could just write out regular displacement maps. A lot of renderers now do support vector displacement. Uh, Mental Ray being one of them now. Um, Render Man of course fully supports it and there are some other renderers working away to incorporate that into their rendering workflow as well. So again I'm, I'm roughing in some structure here. I'm following not necessarily anatomy but some basic points here with anatomy. I'm, you know, I'm going to rough in some kind of quote-unquote toes in here. And then for this ankle in here, I'm going to build up some more stone in here. Again, we're looking at just rough shapes. I can crack and split these later on. I'm not worried about that right now. I just want something to work with right now. So I'm just kind of scribbling and pulling these, these shapes up. One of the things that uh, you'll definitely want to look at if, you've, if you're not familiar with Mudbox or any other sculpting applications, you'll definitely want to look at getting a tablet. Um, it, it, it just, you, I mean, you can certainly use a mouse for to accomplish things, but it's worlds apart using a mouse and a stylus to sculpt with. Um, a lot of the sculpting techniques that you're going to use are kind of paint stroke like. Um, so using a stylus is just really second nature here for sculpting up a lot of uh, any kind of forms, any, any kind of detailing as well. We'll get into a little bit of texture painting here later on. So I'm just working with some of these forms here. Start kind of work them up. I'm kind of going with these kind of brick-like structures along his, his uh, kind of his shins below his knees here um, because I want something that just kind of breaks up like that or along his calves here on the back will build up these big kind of round more rounded stones so that they look like they're a little bit worn around the edges where it would have been uh, you know where some deformation would happen if he's running or walking one thing I want to look out for I don't want to have too many little stones in here it can get too busy I think when you're building up something with a lot of detail or, or a lot of forms on it like this and then for the back of the foot here we can kind of start roughing in some things. By all means, with this base mesh, this creature, go to town and do your own, your own version um, of this. Uh, some of the the forms and the structures I've played with on here are just something that I like to the the process of of that. But by all means, you could certainly follow the anatomy of a of a creature or of a human as a reference for this. So you could start building, you know, some rocks that follow some tendons. Uh, you know some of the the tendon structures along the back of a foot you could start building in with with rocks and of course with roots It'd be really cool to build build up ligaments and tendons and we're going to get to that a little bit later on there we go I'm just going to keep roughing in these structures here something long kind of a long stone in here there we go that's good enough there and then along again back to the knee I want this kind of noticeable kneecap as a rock as a stone and then these kind of side paddings along the knee here so that you know if he was to be running walking here we'd want something that uh, you know these stones kind of look like they've been weathered or you know, kind of beaten down here by um, some physical processes of rubbing together um, within his uh, his legs there and the back of back of this leg I'm gonna build some of these kind of brick structures up here. There we go. 
And again, I'm leaving those gaps um, in here so that I can fill them with some roots and some vines that are going to intertwine through these boulders later on. And again, because I'm just building a simple structure up in here of these, these rocks, this layout, you know, some of these things as I'm going now, this is too much of a repeated pattern on here. So I'm actually going to combine these rocks and I'll show you kind of a cool, quick way to do that. Let's keep building here. I'm going to switch to my fill tool. The fill tool will actually essentially bring a plane of geometry up. So as you fill it, you can see that I'm, it's, it's filling that gap and it's bringing it up. If I was to flip to the side view here, that's not going to help much, but you'll see that it's actually filling it up in the direction of the, the average normals that I'm working with there. And then with the wax brush, we can kind of break that surface up again, add a little bit to it. The wax brush, as, as good as it is for adding material, using the control key to invert your effect, it's excellent for removing material as well. So any of these boulders that are looking like they're getting a little too big, this guy certainly is. I'll just bring them down a bit. We're going to detail these boulders up, sharpen them up, hammer them up, make them a little more hardened here in a little bit. But for now, we're just focusing on that simple structure here so 